My guest today is Storm superstar Justin Ollum. Juzzy has now played 10 NRL games for the Melbourne Storm and has represented his country PNG eight times. Justin hails from Dinga Village in Sini Sini, Yongamug District in the Simbu Province. How was that? Good. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Welcome okay. to the podcast, Juzzy. Thank you, thank you. Mate, it's uh, a pleasure to have you on and, uh, you know, I've had lots of conversations with you. We both play for the Falcons and we travel a lot, get to spend a lot of time with each other and every time I speak to you, I'm more and more surprised. You give me a little story about this, little story about that and your journey. I know everyone understands Justin came from P&G and it's a great story that he made it to the NRL, but I want to really go in-depth and let, give everyone an insight into exactly what it means to come from where you come from and to get to this point. Yeah, it's good. Um, you know, a lot of people, they don't know, like, my journey coming here, they just think, oh, he's from PNZ, and he just, oh, he just come to the NRL, and that's it, that's all they know about me, yeah. but, you know, there's always something there's a little bit more to it, yeah, for sure. a little bit more. Now, I want to go back, before we talk about too much about football, I want to go right back. Now, take us back to Dinga Village, <laughs> life growing up. I want to know about little Justin Ollum, and give us, paint the picture for exactly what it looks like as a young fella to grow up in PNG and especially in the uh, in the mountains, yeah? In the village yes, where in you're the mountains, from. Yes, What's definitely. it like? Um, we live we live in a little village like um, it's in the in the mountains of PNG in the Sinisinagumul district. Uh, I live with my, my mom and my dad. I have two brothers, one sister, I'm the second in the family. Um, our life over there is not not really, you know, civilized. Like we do we do have like basic health services, education education service, whatever. But, you know, like, electricity is one of the basic needs for, you know, human people to live with. And then we don't have that in the village. And I I remember, like, growing up, we used to, like, depend on generators and solar powers and that. And I remember, like, we used to go to, like, um, if we had, I used to get my mom's phone and then run, like, 30 minutes to go to a store to charge my mom's phone and then (laughs) pay, like, one kina and then bring it back, like, in the afternoon. And then yeah, like that's that's basically our life. And then like the electricity came a little bit, a little bit later. But and then you didn't really go to the villages, and we still like I still think not think, but I still know that like people in there they're still living like without electricity. So if you don't have electricity, what are you doing? How are you? How do we, you <coughs> eat? Shower all that stuff. So we basically shower. We we have like we're blessed with good fresh waters. Yep. Heaps of good waterfalls, and so we just go there, and then we have like natural spring waters coming off the ground. We take wow. them for a drink, yeah, nice. and shower, and it cook. We just basically cook with firewood. So as a young kid, you know, growing up, my job is to fetch water for the house, and then to break firewood so that my mom will cook the meal for my family. You know? Yeah, wow. Yeah, and so no electricity. So you guys have no lights, no nothing. No nothing. So we really? used to have these little Coleman's. They call it Coleman. I don't know, like you light it, and then the little lamps. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah so, yeah. yeah, we just used that one. And then ma- most of the time we just sit around fires, so we, like, lit big fires, and then it's just, like, bonfire every every night, and then just the family just get around in the heat. And, yeah, Yeah. wow. And so what did, what did you get up to as kids growing up in PNG? Like, obviously there's a massive love for football, which we'll get to, but what were you guys doing? You were walking everywhere, yeah? Yeah, definitely walking. I remember, like, my mom used to bob me shoes, and then, like, I'll walk 100 metres from the house, and I have to take it off and hide it in the grass so I can walk. It's comfy walking, you know, without shoes to the school. And then <laughs> so everyone we play around, bare feet. yeah, bare feet, and then come back, and then we have to like take the shoes out of the bush and then wear it again and go just because we don't want to get bashed by our parents, you know. <laughs> Sometimes we just walk around and we got like cuts in our legs, and then we come back and then wear the shoes and then we pretend when we go home we pretend to walk, you know, natural. But then our parents used to see like you know, we're walking funny, and then they'll be like, "You got something in your leg, boy? Come here." <laughs> That's when they bash you. So how long was the walk to school? Um, initially, like, from, I did year one to, no, no, preparatory till year two was, um, I live in, like, a compound where my dad work. Yeah. So it was, like, only 20 minutes to walk. Okay. So it was good. But after that, my dad went to uni, and I had to move back to the village with my mom. So from there, it was, like, almost an hour, hour 30 to go to the school. Yeah. I still went to the same school, but... So you walked an hour 30 to go to school? Yeah, wow. go there and then come back. Wow. And that hour 30 is like every day. So, no way. So you guys are just right. like and it's not It's not normal like flat road. You have to climb mountains and that. Really? <laughs> <laughs> we have to cross three rivers. 
Three rivers. Yeah. But the other one, the other two got bridges. So which is yeah, good. right. And what, you just a group of kids and you all go together? Yeah. And then like we have like, we have a um, group of kids like, I live like from right at the border. Yeah. From the other village. So a lot of the kids in uh, my tribe, they come and then I'm the last one there. They pick me up and then we just go together. Yeah, right. So yeah. I've had conversations with you about the villages. Can you give us a little bit of uh, insight into that? So each village, like how big are they? And generally each village is, is that like a family? Yeah, so basically we have like clans. Yeah. So the close clans, like four or five clans that live together in a village and then the next village is the same. Yeah. But And then our lands are like next to each other everywhere, but you know where your land is. Yeah. And you take things from your own land. You know, you do gardening at your own land, on your own land, and then if you cut the trees to build a house or go firewood, whatever, you go to your own land and you take it. So you it. basically live off the land for food, we, for food, fire, for everything. Food, fire, everything. That's we amazing. get all our food from there. Our, the only thing we need to buy, like if you live in the village, if you're not lazy, yeah. <laughs> if you're not lazy, the only thing you will need is like we get oil to cook food, Yep. Uh, salt, mm -hmm. and soap to wash, and... Rice, sometimes you want to have like variety in your food, but mm. otherwise, it's just we just get everything from the land. Like, I, I remember I, I used to look after like chickens in the village. I have like three or four hundreds of them that's just running around in my land. So, was that you told me you, you had a couple of jobs? So, was the looking after the chickens one of the jobs? Looking after the chicken, uh, looking after pigs. Yeah, I have like I remember I have like four or five pigs. So, I have to take them every morning before I go to school. Yeah, I have to take the pigs and go to the to the swamps and then the, just tie them there so they can eat worms, whatever they had. Yeah. And then come back and I feed the chicken in the morning. Yeah. And I open the, uh, the house, the little hut, so they go out. And then I shower and go to school. So when I come back, I'll have to make sure I, I break firewood for my mom. Yeah. And then I fetch water for my mom. Yeah. And um, I have to chase, go and bring the, bring the pigs back to their house. And then I'll have to go and chase like this old chicken, like all around two or three hundred of them. Two, three hundred. Yeah. So I'll have to, like, <laughs> I asked some of my friends to like help me. So that's where we, that's the fun part. They run at these chickens. So we'll have to chase <laughs> them and then catch them all and put them in the house before it's dark. So when it's dark, you know. The, How long does that take? Oh, three, two, three, four hours. Three, four hours. Yeah. And then we just keep going. <laughs> and like sometimes we, um, we used to, um, um, you know, kill some of the chicken on purpose, like chase them and then just fall on them so we hope they die. So, because when they die, we know we have chicken in for dinner. <laughs> so, that's what we do. <laughs> we so, that every day, <laughs> every you have day. to take them out, put them back in. Every day, we have to take them out, put them back. Oh, because if wait. we leave them out there, like, you know, dogs will come and, yeah. you know, eat them or like out of wild possums and that will come. And, and then the other job you also had was the coffee. Yeah. Is that when nah, you're a little coffee, bit older? Yeah, the coffee is when you're a little bit older by... It depends, like, if you have a coffee gut and you go and you clean it. And it's basically, like, that's, like, that's, like, your, what can I say? That's, like, a property where you get your income from. Yeah, okay. Coffee, so you have to, it's it's a lot of hard work, you know. You have to clean the weeds every time. Yep. And then, yeah, that's it. Yeah, nice. Yeah. So, uh, now, Justin, you were going to school. I want to know, what's your first memory of rugby league? I know, yeah, for people that don't know, actually, the national sport in PNG is rugby league. Like, if people have, who haven't been there, it's phenomenal. Like, they yeah. love rugby league. But what's your first ever memory? Can you, uh, can you remember? I remember. I remember my my big brother has, like, a, my dad went to, I, I don't know, he went to the, some other province and then he bought a jersey. Yeah? And it was a Broncos jersey. Wow. Those old ones. With a, the old stallion is on it. The not old, just like, the head. Mustang horse. Yeah. yeah, not, yeah, the, yeah. Not, the, um, not just the head. Yeah. So he had that one, and then there was like a big writing. I think it's power. Yeah, power I think I remember yeah. the old jersey. Yeah, yeah, and then like he had that jersey, and then like from there I was just like, yeah, yeah, Broncos, and yeah, that's 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 why I ended up starting Broncos, and then the maroon color looked like that Broncos, so that's why I go for Queensland. Oh come on, mate. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> What about um? Where, so when was the first time you then? So you got the Broncos jersey. Oh, and then he had um blues jersey too. Yeah, so you and didn't then, go for the blues. No, so I we used to think that the Broncos jersey was maroons uh, and the blues jersey was blues. Yeah, right. So um, he used to wear the blues jersey, and then I used to wear the Broncos jersey. So <laughs> we have our little games back in the. Ah, oh, there you go. So when was the first time you watched a rugby league game? Uh, I think it's back in the village. Yeah, because we used to have like local um local friendly games, whatever. So 
like sometimes my village people in my village will write you know we don't have phones back then so they will write a letter yeah to people like from um like let's say here and Tullamarine Tullamarine yeah yeah and they'll be like oh oh Zilong yeah and from here to Zilong it's not just you know there's mountains we have to go through so if someone from there is coming over here or if they someone is traveling over there they gave him the letter and go say go give it to the captain of the team captain of the team so they give it and it will be like oh we're going to come around that um two weeks time on a sunday and we're going to play use there and then we wait for their reply no way so they send another letter over <laughs> how are you sending the letter through people like you know when just people just through people walking yeah, there yeah people traveling or if there's cars going or yeah like we just that's them. crazy yeah. so you'll put a letter out and then in a couple of weeks time they'll re- reply uh, a couple three or four days they three will or reply four guys, and then they'll say okay and then you and guys meet like, to yeah. play football and then be like oh we're going to come on that date and then confirm so we just believe they're going to be ready for us so if we that's go crazy. to their village we just and then that uh if you back then like money oh i remember five five kina that's yeah. a lot of money we don't yeah, have can any you tell money. us what give us a um so people know one dollar how many kina one dollar is like three almost four toya so let's yeah let's say five um ten dollar yeah. is three kina three kina and three what kina, could three kina yeah. get you so people for reference <laughs> We can, uh, it's not it's not gonna get you a lot of things nowadays. No. <laughs> back then it can get back you. Back then a lot though. Back then it can get. Uh, I remember um, three kina can get you a one kilo packet of rice. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's it. Yeah. And that's that's like the meal, meal for the family. Yeah. Right. So yeah. Wow. So that was. So your if you first pick if you pick coffee cherry. Yeah. We're just gonna be like, oh, if coffee they they have season they're like a seasonal thing so yeah. they they ripe every after six months. Yeah. But in this between, you know, there's like, oh, there's a few ones ripening. So we go and pick those ones. Yeah. We call it cherry. So we just take them and then go to the local buy and you get like 10 bucks, 20 bucks. That's a lot of money. So, yeah, you, yeah. you know, when you're lucky, we just go get rice, a tin, tin fish and maggi noodles. And then we just pick like local veggies and then. How good. That's a good meal you can get. Yeah, that's nice. So how, that was your first <laughs> recollection of a local game. Now, when was the first time you ever seen an NRL game on TV? Uh, I think it was, it was the Melbourne Storm Grand Final. Was it? Yeah. In what year? The the first one, the first Grand Final where they won. Oh, really? Yeah. The first ever? So yeah, how the old were you ever. then? Uh, it was 1990. It was 99? 99. Yeah. So that's probably, I was, I was born in 93. No, you weren't, mate. You were born in 83, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> nah, 93, so... Yeah, I think that's the earliest memory. Old, yeah, right. Yeah, that's the earliest memory. I and had. did you know, like, obviously Marcus Boy was PG. That's, that's, uh, everyone knew, knew Marcus. Everyone knew Marcus. It yeah. was all over the Maggie Noodles card because we. Oh, really? Yeah. The Maggie Noodles card. <laughs> so we have like the Maggie Noodles, and then they used to put like NRL um, players in there. Yeah, yeah, right. We used to force our parents. I need a noodles just to <laughs> buy it to collect the <laughs> players. Just to get the card. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That's and Marcus, I, I think Marcus was back then. He was the ambassador of the Pepsi. Oh yes. So his face was all over the Pepsi. Everywhere. Can, so everywhere, yeah. Marcus, Marcus. Now, for, like, uh, I don't think many people would know or have seen. Now you've got no electricity. You don't have a TV. For people to watch an NRL game in 1999, where did you go? I was lucky because it was um, towards the end of the year. Yeah. September. So we had to come down to another province. It was in the city, like. Um, to for I think one of my aunties getting married, and then we had to come there. So it was like, we were lucky we came to the town part. Yeah. So they had a TV there. Oh wow! That was uh, I was lucky to come there. That's when I watched the game. I remember it was like last ten minutes or something where they were like, "Oh, Marcus Bay is playing. You know, their grand final. They're gonna win." And then they're like, "Oh, everyone come and see." And I remember I watched the little ten minute part. Yeah. And then yeah. And how many people were there? Oh, it's, it's just a family thing. So oh, just a little. Yeah, 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 yeah. right, right, right. But yeah. for people to what what about for people to watch a NRL game in like your village and stuff? How do, how is that even possible? What do they have to the do? Early mem- my early memory of that one is when I went to do E seven. Yeah, and back then we don't have like we do have screens, but we don't have TV like the actual TV broadcasting in the villages. Uh, even at my local school too, like the high school. Yes, and I remember our new head teacher, like the principal of the school, he um. He bought a disc, yeah, and then we had to get it. Like we were lucky, and then we get the NRL games there, and then that's where like I have to 
after school, I have to go back to the. I was in year seven, so I have to go all the way back to my village. Yeah, walk there, put all my school bags, whatever. Help my mom, whatever. He dinner, and then I have to run back just to watch the game. No, <laughs> yeah. And this is the hour and a half journey. Yeah. So you're going. I to make it thirty minutes or twenty. I sprint. You're running. <laughs> That's hilarious. Just to watch a game of footy. Yeah. That's and then you come back again. And then after that, like sometimes my my big brother is um is a boarding in the school. Boarding school, school so, yeah. Yeah, so sometimes I crash with him if it's too late, but otherwise I just run back. <laughs> that's hilarious. Get my books to come back again in the that's morning. That's crazy. Yeah. Okay. But it's, you, it's nothing you can, like, that's it. it's nothing compared to, to we can we can't really think about the fatigue part or the hard work part of it. We were just too excited to watch the game. We just, let's go. You're not even thinking about that. Oh, not thinking about anything. We're just oh, running. We're like excited, smiling all the way from our house there. <laughs> <laughs> now, the the really interesting part is that people are going to be shocked by is your actually your journey to rugby league. Now, talk to people about when you first wanted to start playing rugby league. What happened then? And then how 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 did you get into it? Like, what was your pathway to just start? Oh, uh, so I um um my uncle, which is our adult that. My my parents adopted him, and then he's a rugby player as well. Yeah, he plays for the national team, and he went to England, played in the Ted Tire, whatever. And oh, then wow. like rugby, we're like a rugby league family. Yep. So, I um, I always wanted to play. My yeah. big brother plays it as well. So, I think I wanted to play, but my mom, my my mom is um, she's always like a fan of us going to school first. Yes. So she's like, oh, you're not gonna play. So I'm I'm always scared of disobeying. My mom was like, fuck, if I, dis- sorry. If I disobey her, I'm going to get into trouble here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm always scared of her, you know, she's, oh, she's very religious, whatever, too, so, yeah. <clears throat> and I didn't play. I remember I was in year seven, I wanted to have a go. We used to sneak around, you know, like little backyard, whatever. Just with your mates, yeah. With my mates, but it doesn't really work. And then one time we had, a, like, a friendly game. Our school, we were writing letters. To the other school, it was unofficial as well. Oh, really? So they had to like catch the bus from like two, three hours away to come and play us. Wow. <laughs> yeah, and then um, I remember playing. And then that day, my mom told me, because I was in a rush and, you know, packing my boots and whatever. I remember I used to like have my rugby boots and my socks and whatever. I, d- I didn't like, I didn't really use them, mm. but I used to just wash them and just put them there and then. I used to just look at them and just go to sleep. Sometimes I just wear full, full kit and it's off in the bed. <laughs> <laughs> so that time I was packing my boots and then my mom saw me and it's like, oh, I know you want to go play rugby, but you gotta, you don't. I'm gonna tell you that you have to stay back and help me, and you're not gonna go and play. And then I was like, oh, mom, look, I have to go and play, and it's like, oh, you have to do this and that, and then I, I had to rush and did everything like wow. I can to you know get the job done. All your chores and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And then and then after that, she's like, "Oh, still you're not going." Oh. And then I was like, oh, "Okay, sweet, I'll uh, go. I'll go to the river." And then I sneak out with my boots. <laughs> 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 I went and played it in my first carry. I got lifted. I was very skinny back then. Today, I how much really, did you weigh? I don't know. Like a I don't light. Know. Yeah, light as. And how old were you 50. now? Your first game, how old were you? Uh, I was in E um, E seven, so so like twelve, thirteen, thirteen, yeah, yeah. twelve, thirteen. Oh no, no, E year ten. Sorry, I was in E ten, so and it was two time. weeks before my like we have a national examination. If you fail, you go and fail. Like you have to redo the here again. Yeah, right. And two weeks before that, so so your first run, you break your. Yeah, I broke my uh, left coll- uh, right collarbone. I think. No way. Yeah, yeah, just this one. So what did you do? How are you going to go home? Oh, my God. I went home, and I was like, I went straight to my mom. And I was like, look, mom, I broke my collarbone. I disobeyed you, and I go and play. And she's like, oh, I told you not to go and play. You know, like <laughs> island moms, eh? I told you not to go and play. You get what you uh, you know, what you wanted what to you get. Deserve, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then I was like, yeah, sweet. And then I just, I don't, I really didn't take any treatment. Like I went to my dad's office. It's like, oh, because he's a doctor as well. Yeah. He's a nurse. I was like, oh, I broke my collarbone. It's like, oh, okay, sweet. I'll give you some medicine. And then I have to carry my arm like this, and then I did the exam. Two weeks. So you didn't do anything really to heal it. You just let it nah, heal by itself. I just let itself. it heal by itself. That's why it's like very thick here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that pretty normal? Like injuries like that, and you just sort of like yeah. just let it naturally heal. I, I think so. That's the mentality, you know. Unless you, you be uh, like your big bones are broken. Like yeah, you have then to they get cast to it. Yeah. But otherwise, but just otherwise, just little injuries. It's just even cuts. We just tie it with like leaves and that. Just the cuts. Yeah. 
Yeah, broken collarbone's not that little though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just let it heal. Just let it heal. And then you did your exam. So and then after the exam, I remember we went out for like after the exam we were drinking. Yeah. And oh my god. <laughs> and then I read a lead and he was uh, bruising all around here and I was blood clotting. I was like, oh, I'm not gonna lift my hand again. Next three weeks, I was just I couldn't even wear a shirt ever shower whatever. So sore. So sore. So. And then that, eventually it just got better. Yeah. <laughs> after that, like I didn't play again. And then we went to, year, I think, year 12. So two, so you didn't play after that for two years? Yeah. Wow. And then year 12, um, we had, um, so we, I went to another school and I was boarding back then. So, you know, we did the same thing. We write a letter and it's unofficial. No one, like, no the administration didn't know. If they know, we're going to get punished, whatever. Really? Yeah. So you guys, as a, you yeah, guys, the boys, all your mates, the, all the boys, you yeah, just write a letter. Yeah, all the boys, we just get together. It's like, look, we're going to arrange a friendly game with this school. So you just you guys just cooperate and then we just go sneak out. So where do you do it so you don't get caught? We just go and play anywhere, like the nearest field. Really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> so we went there and then I remember me and my best friend, we went there. And these fields, that well, people need to understand, this isn't oh your local God. rugby league it's field. Not. I've seen the field that you broke your collarbone on. Yeah. It's uphill. Uphill. Uphill, <laughs> and there's, it's like, not flat. There's, it's it's oh, divots everywhere. Yeah, it's everywhere. just like anything. Said, yeah. There's one field, on this, the worst field I've ever played in. The the yeah. other try line is like basketball court. And then the other one is like classroom um, doors. And then like the steps is down there, so it's like concrete. And the other side is like main road. If they hit you out, you fall to the main road. You go get hit by the car. <laughs> and the other side, like there's like um big trees, and then the roots are like coming out of the ground, and they're there, bro. And then there's like a very like diagonal drain yeah. through the middle for irrigation. Oh my god! Oh, that's the worst feel I played in. I remember. <laughs> So you organise that friendly. So for pe- and also for people that don't know, like you put a lot of emphasis on your education. Like I know that was driven from your mother, yeah. but I know you wanted to play football and you're talking about that. But yeah. at the same time, you're really focused on your education. Like yes. That's a priority for you. Hundred percent. That's yeah. why I was like, oh, look, this is because year twelve is the year you want to get past and go to the uni. Yeah. Because if you get dropped out from there. That's- that's not nothing for you. Mm. You just go back to the village. That's it. And that understanding of university being really important, was that something you came to that conclusion or was that something just driven by your mum? Like when did you go, yeah, you know, um, this is really what I want to do? Um, it was driven by my mum at first and yep. then after I realised that I had to do something with my life, you know. Mm. I didn't want to go back to the village. And, then and that was your ticket out yeah, of the village? Ticket. That, that's, the, that's our only ticket out of the village. That's yeah, to go right. get education. Edu- get education. That's the only way out. That's the only way out. Mm. So you go to that, now you organise this friendly game in uh, year 12. That's your next game of football. Yes, that's my any, next. Any changes? Are you still skinny kid? Oh, I was a very skinny kid back then too. That's the, uh, and then like we went there, we were going to play. And then I remember, so we have three different grades. Yeah. And then we just put like C, B and A grade are like the, you know, the top players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I remember they're putting me in the B grade. Yeah. But they're, they're playing me in the centres half time with my, my friend. Yeah. So they gave me like only 20 minutes. Yeah. And then I was like, I told my friend, look, I came out. I was rattled. I was, I, cause I always knew that I was going to, I was a better player and I wanted to play, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. But when they did that to me, I was, rattled. I was like, you play every, like all the other minutes, I'll just stay out and wait for you. Yeah. Right. And then he ended up saying no too. And then we just came home. We didn't play actually that time. Wow. So at this stage, you're 18, you're not even thinking about I want to play rugby league as a career. No. Not even thinking about I wasn't it. thinking about rugby league. I still love the game. Yes. I was a very passionate. But you're not, there's no, there's of, no um, vision or dreams of I'm nah. going to play in the NRL. No. Nah. No way. I, I was like NRL is at the back of our mind, but it's not a reality dream, you know? Yes. It's like, oh, yeah. It would be cool, it's it's okay to dream, you know? Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah. Wow. Now, you, t- uh, you talk about a couple of things I want you to tell us a story about. One, you... You talk about you just in the B team for the village. Like you're not even the best player in your village at this no. stage. And but you go to university and you now get an opportunity to play rugby league. No, yes, definitely. So, so how did you tell us through? Talk us through how that happened. So uh, when I went to the uni, I wasn't really interested in playing anyway. Yes, but we have these university games, so they go to every places to. Like all the universities, so play against each to other. To play against each other. Yes. So n- this year they're gonna come to our uni. Next year we go to their uni. Yep. That's like this. So there were, I, there's one place in PNG, Rabaul, 
it's it's like a beautiful place. So I wanted to go there. I always wanted to go there. I was like, if I had the opportunity, opportunity, I'll go there. And then they had a university there. They have a university there. Sorry. So um, the that year, uh, they were gonna play the uni games over there. So I was like, oh, wait a minute. That's my opportunity to go and see this place. Ah, so if I and play rugby league, league, if I play I rugby league, there. and if I get lucky with the selection, I might go there. Ah. And then me and my friend discussed this, and then it's like, oh, let's do it. Let's have a go. <laughs> and then I, That's yeah, crazy. we went and played. That was when I was first year. So yeah, and then. Wow. And you started. Your university gave you some opportunities in terms of being able to play football. You started the gym in uni. No, no, not yet. No, there was no gym in our uni anyway. Oh wow! So that no didn't gym. happen until the hunters. That didn't happen until no, uh, my local team, oh, Snacks local Tigers. Team. Yeah. Okay, so where are you now? You're back. You're back at uni. Also, people need to understand. Tell us about the uni degree that you've uh, that you've got. Oh, uh, so I did uh, four years in applied physics. So applied physics is like um, <laughs> that is crazy. It's it's general, but I'm specialized in electronics and instrumentation. Yeah. So we do like programming, instrumentation, like troubleshooting. We can do a bit of like it's it's a broad thing. You can do yeah. electrical, mechanical. Like some of my colleagues now, they're working in mines. Some of them say some of them are doing electrical engineering. Yeah. Like they're working as electrical engineer. Some of them are working at, uh, as mechanical engineers, and which is good. Some it's of them crazy. are instrumentational, like instrumentation technicians. That's crazy. All of them are working. Yeah. And I'm the only one. Because there's here. a lot of mines in PNG, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So for four years, you started uni at 18 and you do a four year uni degree. And yeah. in that time, you're playing rugby league for the university. Yeah. So I started playing then. So I was just, I didn't, yeah. So I was playing in the uni. Yeah. So for four years. So the first year, I was just wanting to make the uni team to go and play there. To travel. Yeah. Yes. So to travel. So I remember I used to play lock. <laughs> yeah, I used to play lock, and then <laughs> there was um two. I think they got two locks. Yeah, and then they still want to play me in the team, and they're like, "Look, want to use us to swap, um, swap position or whatever, like alternate position and play something else." And then the coach asked me, "Look, there's a spot in the center if you want to ever go." And yeah. I'll say, "I always wanted to play center." Yeah, and I was like, "Oh, I'll ever go. That's good." And then I played, and then. My Senna career started there. When you started Senna, was there someone that you... Do you remember idolizing someone? Was there someone that you looked up um, to? I always watch some... You know, we have like... I always have like I uh, highlights for players. Yes. And I remember I have highlights for Steve Matai. Ah, yes. And that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> <laughs> no. I love the way you talk a lot. It's crazy. Poof. Steve Matai and Justin Hodges. Yes, nice. So Steve Matai, Justin Hodges. And then... Yeah, like his short side plays are yeah. hectic. Him and Greg Inglis. Yeah, oh, wow. three players. So how did but I'm, I'm too small to be Greg Inglis, so I try to watch my game more on Steve Matai. Yes, he's a beast. <laughs> and he's a nugget too. He's, a, he's the bad he's, he's tackling the hex. So you, how do you go from doing a university degree, playing rugby league part-time at the uni, yep. how, do you, how does it create a pathway for you to do this professionally or full-time where's how does that journey happen, happen? oh so my first um my first day at uni it was just local uni foodie so it's not that hard yep it's easy and then then you move into the centers and i'm still and i'm playing centers yep and then my second year at uni it was just normal local foodie too mm-hmm. until like towards the end of the year i was like they were doing um so our little competition in the town they're doing selection, so there's like local competitions around the provinces. Yep. So they want to pick a team, so they basically split um, PNG into four teams. So they have, we have Highlands, Highlands, uh, Southern, that's like Pomosby and down that way, and mm-hmm. then the Northern, um, Mamase is like towards the north. So they which one were you in? I was in the Mamase, ah, Northern. Northern, yes. I was in the Northern, so we had to go and play, and then. I remember there's like one game left for the selection of the um, my local town, mm-hmm. my town to go play for the to get the Northern team. So there's one game left, and then one of my friend he was playing in there. It's like, oh, there's a game left to make selection. So come and have a go and see if you're lucky. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, let's go. Wow. And then I, I went and played it. I remember I scored three tries. Nice. And then like they got 20, 25 men players, and then I, my name was on the last list. Wow. And that's basically where my 
my rugby league career started. So if I you think. never went to that game, I never went to that one game. I wouldn't be here. Wow. I don't know what's going to happen, but I wouldn't yes. be here. But you don't know. But yeah. Wow. And okay, you go to the northern team. So from the northern team, yes, not the northern team, but my team to go play and contest to um, be picked for the northern team. Oh, okay, yes. So and then we went to play for the um, like to contest for the northern team. We lost in the grand final, mm-hmm. and then. Yeah, I got selected for the Northern team. So you were playing well? Yeah, I was playing well. Yep. And then I, w- I got selected to play for the Northern team. Mm-hmm. And then I, rem- and I remember we played the thing. So it's like only three games because it's only four, four teams. We'll have to play like three games and then the elimination. Mm. So the first game they didn't play me. So they made me run the water. No way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh. And I was filthy too. And then I was like... And then a thought came to me. I was like, "Look, I'm I'm at uni. Look at these guys. They have nothing. Yeah, you know, like no offense, but yeah, of course. They're they're not. They're like people from the blogs, and they're, they're I'm at uni. I just quit footy, and then I don't need to get upset here. I'll just go and study, and then get a job, and that's it. Mm. And then I almost quit there on that day. On, on that day, because I didn't play, I was very upset. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and then the, the next day, I was like, oh, "Okay, I'll." I'll just wait and see the next day. If they don't play me, I'm going. Yeah. And they lost the day. Yeah. So the next day they played me and then, yeah, I think they, they put me on the team. Yeah. And then before I went went to the field, I just came to the sideline. Mm-hmm. And before I crossed the line and ran into the field and then I made a little prayer. And I was like, look, if, uh, Lord, if you have anything for me in the path of life, rugby league, um, I'm, I'm willing to take it and to... You know, concentrate on it and see where it's gonna take me. And after I prayed that prayer and I went in, it was just everything is just history. So I just went in and we. I remember scoring two tries that game. The second game we won. The third game, I scored another three tries. Wow, try scoring machine in the grand final. I, I scored three tries and then we lost. Oh, <laughs> it was the only eighteen points. Wow. <laughs> yeah, and then after that, my local team. Um, for me, yeah. The next, I guess our coach was there. My coach, my favorite coach, Stanley Tappan. He was there to, and then he watched the game and he picked me. It's like he, after the game, he came to me and he took my hand, and I was very surprised because he's like, you know, well known Stanley Tappan, you know, the big guy in the thing. And then I said, oh, he came and took my hand. It's like, look, um, I'll let, I'll give you a go preseason if you want to do it. Come and I'll do preseason with us and see how you're gonna go. Wow. So, how did, did you finish your uni degree, or did you have to I was, juggle this was, with uni? I'm, I'm telling the story. That was when I was second year, end of second year. Oh, end of second year. Yeah, end of wow. second year. I got still got two years, and then they and then that time it was 2013, and then 2014. That's when hunters were gonna come in. So from that from that four team, they choose um, I think 20 men squad to go and take part in the hunters training camp, and they gave me the center spot. Wow, so was Stanley Turpin the coach of the Hunters? No, he was the no. co- uh, coach of the Snacks Tigers. The Snacks Tigers, yeah. Yeah, so that's my local. And I think I've seen them play, because when I went to play with the Falcons versus PNG, before the Hunters game, all those other teams are playing. Yeah. Is that true? That's the competition. That's the competition, yeah. so yeah. that runs throughout PNG. That runs, uh, every, runs throughout PNG. It's all yep. the local provinces. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's okay. all the provinces. Are and all those teams, provinces. you're trying to get selected into the Hunters from those into teams. Into the Hunters and the national team. Right. Yep. So you played some games for the Sax Tigers? Yeah. I played two years there. Two years. Yep. And so you played two years for them while doing a university degree? While doing my uni. You finish your uni degree yep. and you get selected from the Snacks Tigers to be in the Hunters top squad? Yeah. Wow, that must have been massive. Mm. Were you surprised? I was surprised because, and the timing was great as well because I wanted to quit your uni and then go to Hunters because, you know, Hunters was back then, it was very, like, it's still now, but I, yeah. The hype was there, and everyone wants to be part of the hunters. And I'm like, yeah, that's my opportunity. I want to go. I came home, told my mom and my dad, that they're like, shut up and go back to school. <laughs> <laughs> they were as excited they as you. Oh, oh, I was filthy. I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's my only opportunity. You yeah. can't take it away from me. Do you remember when you got told that you were going to be in the hunters team? How did you get um, told? Uh, after the thing, they made presentation. They like, oh, you guys going to do that? So we give you this thing. So you guys going to be part of the training squad. Training squad. It's not the final hunters team, yes, but yes. training squad. So, and then I was like, "Oh, I'm unlucky now." So, I was happy with it. So, yeah, my parents told me, "Look," and then I was like, "Oh, okay, I got snacks tigers, so I can still play rugby and go to uni." Mm. So I ended up playing um, snacks tigers, 
Uh, at Snacks Tigers as well, I wasn't the first choice um, winger. They wanted me to play. They wanted to play me on the wing because my coach see that I was fast back then. Not now. <laughs> 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 so yeah, and I was the 18th man, and then one of the. So you weren't even first choice for the nah. local team. No. Wow. <laughs> and then we went to play, and then I was the 18th man, and then I think the winger got. Uh, it was sick a little bit, and yeah. then yeah, and then my coach and my team manager they, they come and told me, look, we're gonna play here, so. You get ready they put like, you yeah. in, and then next thing you're in the Hunters team. And put me in, and there. Uh, wow. Just keep playing. That's crazy. <laughs> now, talk me through the Hunters. You talked about there's a lot of hype there. Um, where, you know, we're, we're getting to the point where you're getting that storm selection. Talk me through the Hunters when it started. It must have been really exciting times. New yeah. opportunity for yeah. learning for you. Yeah. Jim, I imagine, you started getting yeah. into weights. A lot more development. Yeah. Talk us through that. So, while playing for uh, Tigers, I. Uh, uh, I have access to gym, so I did a little bit of gym, which is good. Yep. And then at the end of 2016, I um, got selected for Prime Minister's 13. Wow. That was before I made the Hunters team. Wow, really? Yeah, that's my first uh, game. That's crazy. So you played yeah. for the PNG national team yeah. before the Hunters? Before the Hunters. That's crazy. So uh, I was 2015, sorry. 2015, yes. 2015, so that, that time I think, yeah, that I was third year. Third year. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I don't know. No, 2015, I was final year, yes. Okay, of That's university, it. yes. Yes. So now you start the Hunters. Talk to me about the Hunters. How are yeah, you guys, so we got, you yeah, guys we live got, together, train together? We got selected uh, to go to the Hunters. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I think it's a 36 to 40 man squad. Mm -hmm. So from there, they're going to trim it down to the 20, 30, around there. Yep. 25 to 30. Yeah. So basically, like, People coming from all parts of the country, you know, young boys, yeah. so the old players are there, they still want their spot. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then that is like just stuck us in um, a dormitory of our school, a yeah. uh, university, we just stay there. And then in Port Mosby? In Port Mosby. Yeah. And it's just basically a prison and it's just grinding. Really hot. 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 How Port hot? Mosby. Port Mosby, is, it can get very hot. I reckon the average is like around 28, 26, yeah. so, but. That's the temperature, but the humidity of the place is yeah. very hard too. And then, yeah, it's just from there, it's just, you know, everyone wants a spot in the hunter squad and you have to work hard. Yeah. And Did you think you were going to make it? I didn't have any expectation, to yeah. be honest. I just wanted to, dude, like, do my best. Mm, and see what happens. I, yeah, see what happens. That's my mentality. Mm. I was like, and every day I go to training, like, even conditioning and that, I was just, Ripping in just to give you know give myself a better chance to be looked on by the coaches, mm. and <clears throat> end of the year you'll have to go back, so they send us back, yeah. and then you'll have to wait for the coach to call you. If he doesn't call you, you're gone. No <laughs> oh, way. Wow. So you go back home, and then I go back home, and then I went to the village, and like I just stayed uh, with on my phone, just waiting for the coach if he's gonna text me back. And, and then do you remember the moment when he... When yeah, he and then one time I came to town with my uh, my mom to do some shopping. And then that's when he called me. Because he was trying to call me a few times, but I was in the village and sometimes, you know, the coverage is the not that good. <laughs> the reception is like... No way. Oh, uh, yeah. He called me. I was like, yes. <laughs> what did your mom say? My mom said, yeah, okay, you can go now because <laughs> we finished their uni. So we oh, know nice. I was okay to graduate uh, 2016. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I went back and then... Yeah, from there I was at, um, I think I was in the reserve, the first Hunters game. Really? Yeah, I think I was in the reserve. And then our um, captain who plays in the centers, Yeah, he was sick the first game. It was against South Log and Magpies, I think. We came to Brisbane. Yeah, wow. And then I was lucky, like, some people have to, you know, get hurt or, you know, sick or whatever, and I was just... But you know that's how you take your opportunities. Yeah, that's 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 that's, uh, that's how I take my opportunities. I reckon. Yeah. So I was just ready to play, and then yeah, when that happens, I was just I just jump in, and then from there I didn't miss a game. It's amazing. Yeah. How was your first experience leaving the country? Was it weird? Oh, I was I was excited. I was yeah. like, I'm gonna go to Australia now. I've never been out of the country. <laughs> I was like, yes, let's go. Is that cool? Yeah, it was so cool. That's mad. And it now at so this cool. time, are you starting to think? I know you're not getting too far ahead of yourself, but are you starting to think like, okay, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life, like rugby league, my career. This is what I want to, what I want to chase. At the moment, I'm, uh, I'm just, I'm focusing on playing. I have like other plans on sides. I'm, you know, doing things, mm. but 
I'll ever go with uh, rugby first, and then if I can, I'll try to get a job with my degree or mm. study, f- do some studies as well. Because I, I can't, I can't do studies at the moment because of my visa. Because mm-hmm. I'm here on the sports visa, so yes. I can't study or work. Mm. But I got my PR, so which is good. Mm. I'll ever go next year, end of the year. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Clean Heat's customer service has just one best in show. They make gas easy so your life can flow. Their hot meals, hot baths and your heater aglow. So if you're not with Clean Heat, give them a go. The WA Gas Company, helping your life flow. Say hello to tastier and easier dinners with HelloFresh. HelloFresh delivers everything you need to cook simple, crowd-pleasing dinners right to your doorstep. With a variety of quick and balanced meals to choose from each week, you can enjoy hearty halloumi burgers one night to crunchy almond-crusted salmon the next. Sign up today at hellofresh.com.au to receive 40% off your first box with the code HELLODINNER. Hello simple, hello delicious, hello fresh. So you're playing good footy for the Hunters. Um, when does Talk to me about the moment because I don't really know too much about this. How did you get recruited to the Melbourne Storm? Uh, so it was, I think, round... Um Around round five. Oh, round five. Yeah. So I think it's, I, if I'm wrong, I don't know, but I think Bunny contacted uh, um, Bob Cadmo. Yep. He's the, he was the CEO of the Hunters back then, like the PNG RFL. So he contacted him and he was asking for, I think, me outside backs. Yeah. He was like, yeah, look, Jazzy's here and this, this and that. And then I think Bunny had a look at on me, probably watched my few, well, some of my few games. It's like, and then Bob pulled me in. It's like, look, Storm I having a look at you. So what were you thinking then? I wasn't like. Did you think that's crazy? I wasn't. I, I think it's crazy, but I didn't want to get um, too excited and you know, fumble things. So I was just. But I had a few goals. Yeah. In the beginning of the year, so I was like, that's what were your the, goals? my my goals was um. I said my goal was to play NRL. Yeah. Uh, to get an NRL contract, that was at the top of my list. Really? Wow. Yeah. And. To play in the Hunters, like, regularly, full-time, yes. yeah, full time. And I think the other one was to get the Rookie of the Year award, highest try scorer, and best back, I think. Not bad. That was my, that was my, <laughs> that was my goals. <laughs> not like bad, I not bad. Let them down, and I had to, you know, I, I remember that year I was, I, was, I said, I'm never going to drink for the whole year. Yeah, nice. Because I said, this girl was like, oh, I need to do some sacrifice here. So that's what I was planning. So when I, when they told me about the NRL contract, I was like, oh, that's one of my goals. So I don't need to get too ahead of myself. That makes that motivates me to get my weekly preparation, you know, on point, and then yes. get ready to play every week. Yeah, awesome. and it was my it was the driven motivation to me back then. And yeah, and then they, I think they said a few weeks later, like around eight, I think they sent. Um, they told uh, Bob Cartman and said, uh, look, we're going to um, get him to come and do six weeks in our own preseason. And I was like, and then they told me, I was like, yes. By that time, I didn't tell my mom or anyone. No, why? Because I didn't want to tell people and then it didn't happen. Uh, yeah, and then, yeah, yeah, you know, I understand, I understand. I've yeah, done that so plenty like, of times. Yeah, I'm always, <laughs> <laughs> I'm always very careful on that side. Yeah, you are, actually. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. The whole story, you, yeah. you, don't, you don't set yourself up for yeah. failure, you know yeah. what I mean? I want I want things to be confirmed and done first before I talk about it. So mm. I was like, oh, I'm not gonna tell anyone. So it was just between me and Bob mm-hmm. and the Antis coach. That that was it. And then we came and played the Pacific Test. Oh, they probably watched my, found some of my few games too. I don't know. We came and played the Pacific Test. It was like against Fiji. Two. At, it was at I the was end of the year or middle of the year. In the middle. Middle of the year. Yes. It's like around. That's the. Um, Rep run. Yeah, around June, July. Yeah, yep. June, July, yeah. So that's when we played Fiji. That's when I played there. And then, yeah, after that, they um, sent me the contract. And I was like, oh, wow. We're going to sign him here. So, and then after so first, I didn't. The I, contract was just for preseason? First was, I think it's just for preseason. And then after that, it was just for, it was full time. Once they sent you the contract, two year yeah. contract. Two year contract. Oh I got it. I didn't, when I got the contract, I didn't still tell my mom. I was like, I held it back. I was like, I'll wait till I sign. Because I didn't want to, you know, <laughs> and I was, I wasn't too confident it was going to happen. I was very excited and I was very scared at the same time. So, 
Crazy. What's yeah. ever, what are you what are you thinking? Like, so wait, I, you signed the contract? Obviously, I, yeah. After what are you like thinking? Like, you've signed a contract with the Melbourne Storm. Oh, Can I you was, believe it? Because um, one minute you're not even playing that, football. Yeah, yeah leading to that, like uh, when Billy came in to play for um, Maroons. Yes. So I go for Brisbane because of the jersey I told you about. Yep. And Darren Lucky, obviously, and then Billy because of Billy, I'm Storm. Mm. So I'm Storm and Bronco, like for. Mm. And then when they say like Storm, I was like. Not bad. I gotta see Billy Slater, Cameron Smith, and all these guys. I was very happy. Crazy. I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh, that's, that's a good feeling. I remember I got out of the office and I was just smiling all the way to my like room. <laughs> what uh, were the other boys saying? I didn't tell any boys. Really? Yeah, because I didn't you feel want, bad a little bit. Yeah, I felt bad a little bit. Not to tell them, but I didn't want to tell them and feel like oh, sewing off, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I wanted. I wanted. The coach to you know put it out or yeah. the media to put it out and if they ask me I'll be like yeah it's this and that yeah so I didn't tell anyone so after I signed the we had a co- uh, fresh um, press conference and then I signed the contract and then after that I came out and I called my mom and I said look I got this and that and I'm going next year and then yeah she so congratulated me everyone was very happy my mom was you know always crying so it's crazy crying <laughs> um, that's yeah. amazing. Was, did, at, in that moment, did you like have a chance to sit there and just be like, I, I actually, this? I actually um, went to the field. Yeah. yeah. So because there was things in the stadium, mm. the office. Yes. So I went to the field, the National Football Stadium, and I just sat there and then looked at the rugby league field, and I was like, I was just grateful. It was like such a grateful feeling coming into me. I was like, thank you for everything, and I was just praying. So cool. It was so good. And I was just I thinking was, back, like your whole the whole journey. Just yeah, to get to I was. Point. I remember I was just thinking I was getting a bit emotional because it was such a, like it was a dream come true. It was a fairy tale. Like to be honest, I didn't even think it, this was going to happen. It's amazing. It was unbelievable. And then after that, like I was emotional. Mm-hmm. Like, I said a few tears at the stadium. But after that, like straight after that. It was pure motivation. Mm, next game, ever. next game, I wanted to like play like an NRL player. You know, I went there and I was just <laughs> running with eyes closed. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. It was just that from there. Now, what people need to know is uh, typically the culture in PNG. We all know hard as a rock. They run hard. They tackle hard. A very physical game. But you would be the first one to say, in terms of their development, they don't get a lot of coaching like no. the coaching isn't like here. You know, there isn't the same knowledge and understanding of football. The physical side is there, but you coming to the storm doesn't just mean, okay, I come to the storm. Like, so for myself or the other guys who grew up in Australia with the system, they sign a contract with an NRL team. The pathway's there for them to play in the NRL. For you, you had all the physical stuff and you had the motivation, but you had a lot to learn. How, talk us through how hard that was when you came to the Melbourne Storm. It must have been like, wow. Yeah, that one basically it was it was um it was like starting over. It was like learning rugby league, you know, all over again. I played rugby league, but it was like I have an idea, and then coming to Storm was like actually learning how to play. Yeah, because PNG, I remember like our local coaches, not the one, but like back back in the village. Yeah, the coach job was to do team shit. What did that's he say? Just to do team shit, like oh, you the know, team that, shit. That's yeah, it. Yeah. yeah, that's his job. Tim said and sub, that's all. <laughs> they they no just coaching. tell you no coaching. They yeah. just tell you to get the ball and run, run as hard. hard as you can and tackle as hard as you can. Which works. <laughs> but not in a not And our field our run. field like they're not that wide. Um, the tight fields. Yeah, tight fields <laughs> and then it's like solar to solar. <laughs> if you're on a Scott tries, you left to go through people, you know. <laughs> so your t- first preseason here must have been tough. It was very tough, like it was very tough. Like, I did everything Against the storm system, mm. defensively, yeah, I did everything. I remember, like, the, on the huddle, they'll like, they'll give me. And the huddle, that's our that's our video system. So that's yeah. the coaches send us video yeah, clips to learn. So the video system, they will send me. I don't know if the, some of the other boys get this much clip, but they will send me like oh, countless clips of taking the soul, not protecting things. Don't soul. do this, every don't time. do that, yeah, yeah. And I remember like every training session, I come up the line sideways. I never come up straight, Yeah, ever. 
all little things, but oh. you know, you're just constantly getting reviewed and reviewed. reviewed was and it reviewed. hard? At first, were it you, was you must very, have felt like oh, it, deflated. It you know? was very hard, and it was annoying too. Like I thought I had it, and then I didn't even do anything right. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, I remember I got up straight. Really? Yeah. It was like so. It must have been frustrating. It was very frustrating. It was just. But at the same time, preseason is hard. Pre- uh, it's the hardest I've ever had, like training. And I'm not a, I'm not a big trainer. Yep. So that really broke me. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I was I came from PNG like ninety ninety eight kilos something. Yeah. Wow, oh, pretty big. Yeah, I was fat too. <laughs> <laughs> and then I trimmed down to I think uh, after the army camp, I was um, I think I was around eighty eighty eight eighty nine. Wow. Ten yeah. kilos. That's crazy. Yeah. Then I can put back a few. How were you? And at first, were you a little bit shy? Like, was your I think that's English the, the same as it is now? No. Nah, so didn't, yeah, you were you were a little bit. I didn't reserved. even understand. Like, that's one of the things as well. I didn't really understand the accent. Mm. So if the boys are talking to me, if the coaches are talking to me, I just I told them I prefer them talking to me slowly <laughs> and pronounce the word carefully. Mm. You know, because <laughs> with the Aussie accent, it's so hard for me to understand. Yeah, so. of course. Most of the time, I'll be just sitting in the team room, quiet. Not you didn't even understand. I do understand a few things, especially when they saw the video. But yeah, when, but with the video, when the coaches speaking. like speaking faster, it's like normal pace for them, but it's fast for me. You know, you're just like, oh, uh, yeah. that's <laughs> why I just keep watching the videos. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Now I got here, so that was in your first season was in 2017. Yeah, 2017. 2017. Now I remember um, I was lucky enough. To my own personal experience of you, uh, I remember obviously the physical attributes were there, unbelievable. I, th- I still think you have a great work ethic, but even from uh, what was my first year, 2018 to Justin in 2019, you have developed so much. Do you feel like I know the first the first year is a bit of a whirlwind, even for me? That first preseason was like, wow, there's you got the IDQ camp, you, all this stuff there's going so on, there's so much going on, and you yeah, know, you're just really trying to hang on for the ride. Yeah, that's you know the thing. I, mean? I just want to hang in there. I didn't yeah. really learn a lot of things. Just do your best. But yeah. I feel like last season to this season, and this isn't to bracket you because you come from PNG or anything yep. like that. But the reality is, you come. You, this isn't even your first language. You yep. come from rugby league that you really haven't learned anything. But this year, I feel like your development in terms of understanding the game and the Melbourne system has just gone through the roof, and it's yep. showing in your football now. But talk about us. Talk about your debut because I remember I was there and you sort of spoke about like Billy Slater gave you your yep. first jersey. That must just and it was so exciting for oh. all of us as players because and especially me because I knew what you've been through. But yeah. that must have been crazy. It was crazy. Like to get my jersey from my you know childhood. Idol Billy Slater is unreal. Is I couldn't get it from any other player. Yeah. Billy Slater, I forced to get it from a player, mm. and I was fortunate enough to get it from him. And I was very happy. I remember like that day when Craig told me I was gonna play. It feels like I was dreaming. Mm. Like I was trying to wake up, but it's you know it's real. It's happening. Mm. And then when I got my jersey, it was like oh, it was very. When I got my jersey, like after the, all the talk and the jersey presentation, and we went to do captain's run. You know, we did captain's run, but my head was like reflecting, you know, back to how I came mm. here mm. and all the things that I have to go through. And, you know, even looking back to my my life back in PNG, if I wasn't playing rugby league and coming, but the things that I would have done, you know, mm. and that made me, you know, felt really proud. But at the moment, I was very grateful, you know. I was, I had this sense of, thankfulness in me and I was like you know I couldn't ask for more I'm too blessed mm. it's amazing now to, the we've been lucky enough to I think you've played what is it six or seven games in a row this year yeah seven and you're, you're having you know I think you set yourself up really well in the in the preseason and then in Q Cup because your Q Cup forms have been unbelievable and more than ever you deserved this you earned this position you know what I mean it wasn't it wasn't because someone was sick or anything like that, you you earned this position to get to where you were. What do you see as the massive difference in Justin Oldham 2019? Um, I felt coming back from prison and it was like I came back late and then, you know, I came back late and I was a, I was way back from the other boys and they were like their fitness, their skill. It's hard, level. isn't it? Because everyone's been it training for six weeks. Yeah, they were training for six weeks and when I came back, I was like starting over and mm. I see the boys, you know, developing and then, it felt like I'm not gonna play NRL here. It's like 
because I I knew that the coaches are big on fitness and all this thing, and then I was like, oh look, I sort of felt like fell down a little bit, and then yeah. one thing um, I think if I had to change was when I first got here, I respected the players a bit more. And too much, too much. Yes, I understand what you're saying because you know I didn't want to. I don't know. I'm. I don't know what it is, but I just. I know what you're saying. I more. actually felt the same thing. I think we spoke about this yeah. the other week. And you come in; it's a new environment, and there's a lot of great players here, and That's the you thing. respect them, but you're in awe of them. Yeah. So you sort of feel like reserved, like you yeah. don't want to go too hard here. You don't want to go too hard you over can't there. Can't be yourself. Yeah, no. I understand yeah. that. It's it's a release, isn't it? You yeah. feel like you can be yourself, definitely, especially in the definitely. training environment. Because uh, I I remember one of the guys that really. Um, like uh, influenced me and you know motivated me this year was Marion Seve. Yeah, I gave up. You know, I respect this bloke because you know coming back from preseason and then see the way he works at uh, training, mm. you know, he motivates me. Mm. I was like, look, I can, I can play like him. You know, I can train as hard as the way he trains, and then I was I envy the way he trains, and mm. I wanted to train like that, mm. and then you know leading to um. And real like round one actual season, he he, he actually played, mm. and then I was like, "Well, this is one bloke I have, you know, I I can learn from." Mm. And then that's the thing about Storm, you know, you have great players, good players around you who competes and who you know who challenge you to be to be the best you can mm. be. But they're your mates as well, you know. Yeah, it's great. And you respect it? them. That's the thing. Mm. I remember getting that from Winston Lillowai as well. Mm-hmm. He used to be with the Storm. Mm-hmm. He's not the fittest bloke in the team, but his work ethic is just up there. Mm-hmm. And I remember Craig used to talk like because of the way he works hard and he gave him the jersey to play. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm not big, I'm not fit, but I can lift my hand up to play. Mm-hmm. And that's what I thought. And then like after that, I'm, I remember I told Halogen, I was like, look, I... I need to work on my fitness. Yeah, I told Craig a few times. I went and saw him, and he's like, "Look," he kept saying, telling me the same thing. I always say, like, if you wanna do something in your life, you gotta do it the best as the best as you can, or you mm. don't do it as well. Mm. So yes. Go do something else, you know. Yeah. And then I asked him, like, "Look, um, why do I need to improve?" And he reckons you need to come up early and all these things. And then he said, "What do you need to do to improve that?" And he said, "My fitness." And I always knew that I need to improve my fitness. So I got into halogen and I was like, look, I'm going to bother you here. So can we do a few, you know, bikes or send conditioning or send heart rate, whatever. Yeah. And I remember after that, I was just grinding. Yeah. Just to, just to be fit. Yeah. yeah. And it's then amazing. I felt better. Like I put a few kilos as well. Mm-hmm. And then I was 92 and then I went up to 94, 5. And I went and played. And then I, we spoke about it. Mm. Remember when yeah, I was yeah. like, I felt heavy, but I'm I'm heavy on the scale, but I felt light and I'm fitter, yeah. and I really wanted to play. And then that's when we you know we played, and then like um, in the field as well, you like with all the respect, you influence me as well, and you like you drive me because I see the way you're hungry to you know go in and ever carry and work hard, and I'm like, oh, if these boys can do that, you know, I can <laughs> do that as well. And then that's why I was like, every time before we play, I'm like, you you know, you be yourself because. When you're aggressive and when you're hungry, you know, you play your best game. Ah, thank you. That's why. Yeah, that's so that's about it. And then after that, it's just try to get my fitness right and my routine and then just stick to that. And yeah, I guess it's been working for me so far. Mate, it's been shown and playing with you now is it's as I said before, the physical capabilities were there, but at the storm you need it's like you need to earn the trust of the other players. And you earn the trust by doing the storm things the storm way. And this year you're doing them but and some. You're adding your own little flavour and Jazzy when he's on and unstoppable is a great thing and it's been exciting to see that this year. That's the thing that's the thing about Storm. They don't want you to bring anything extraordinary, you know? Yeah. Just do your job. That's it. It's good, isn't it? It's easy to play footy here, but it's hard if you don't do your job, you know? Yeah, 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 100%. <laughs> yeah. Now, to finish off, Justin, I wanted to touch on, um, I just wanted to give people an insight into what is your passion moving forward in terms of post-football career for P&G? What do you really, we've had some conversations around this, and I even know you've told me that 
some of the best football players you'll ever see in PNG, no one will ever know because they're just in remote villages and no one will ever get to see them. So what's your passion and dream for Papua New Guinea Rugby League and for yourself? What kind of influence do you want to have? 100%. There's, like a, there's a few players that I can remember. They're way better than me. Or like I, There's a guy who can just literally... We will play rugby and he'll just go and that's the try line. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there's heaps of them like but the thing is that's the pathway's not there. Yeah. And if you see that there's a pathway in you you can f- go through, you get motivated and you mm. go, you know. But there is like local footy and then that's it. So if I have to do something after I was after my career I was thinking if I can, you know, get into helping for recruitment and go to the village and, you know, mm. at least see give opportunity to this, like, to this um, young talents coming out. Like, if, for me, if I wasn't at uni, I would be in the village. Yeah. I was lucky I came to uni. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. Thank you to the mum. Yeah, thanks to my mum. <laughs> well, mate, uh, I know people are going to take a lot out of this, and I'm so grateful that uh, you came on and that everyone gets an insight. I think, as I said, people understand that, to make it from PNG is a big feat, but I don't know if they really understand the odds. So I know people will get a lot out of this because everyone's faced with the diversity, but the, just just that the willpower to keep going and just see what's around the corner, and I think that really shows in your story. So, mate, I'm proud of you. The Melbourne Storm's proud of you, and I hope everyone continues to support you and you have a great end to the year. Thanks for having me, Sandor. Good man. Thanks, brother. Thanks, brother. <laughs>